once again in the Lamborghini section of my garage. This is my 1986 Lamborghini Countach. I've had this car, man, almost 22 years. And for a while it was my everyday car. You know, you wouldn't think you could use something like this every day, but actually it's pretty dependable, pretty straightforward. Not as complicated a car as it looks like. You know, this is the classic car of the 80s. I think every guy that's in his early 40s or late 30s probably had a poster of this hanging on his bedroom wall. Uh, I have almost every magazine cover that had the Lamborghini Countach on it. There it is, Supercar Classic, the car that beats time. I mean, these are all magazines I bought in the period. Countach races helicopter, motor trend, road and track, the Super Countach. But the reality is, no Countach ever hit 200 miles an hour. Although the car may look incredibly aerodynamic, it's really not. In fact, you know what's really funny? You know what's a car that's almost twice as aerodynamic as this car? This car. Because although it looks kind of swoopy, it's really like a brick. You know, when you get up over 100 miles an hour, you can feel the wind against this. And it's funny how aerodynamics really has nothing to do with what we think aerodynamics looks like. But that being said, uh, pretty amazing car. This is a car that replaced the Lamborghini Mura. Many people still feel the Lamborghini Mura is a much prettier car than the Countach. I certainly do. But they're just so different. They're both designed by the same man, Marcelo Gandini. Here he is right here. In fact, it was a privilege to have him at the garage. And there's the, probably the most famous test driver in the world, Valentino Balboni, right there. He was at my garage, too. He actually drove my car when it was new. That's kind of cool. Uh, the, the Countach was first unveiled in 1971 at the Geneva Auto Show. And it caused a huge sensation, because nothing looked like it before or since. At that time, it didn't have the flares. It had a little periscope rear view mirror up here. Uh, a few things, and as the car got more powerful, uh, this is my favorite version of the car. This is the very last carbureted car. I know everybody likes fuel injection now, and uh, fuel injection, obviously, the way to go. But in the mid-'80s, fuel injection, hmm, a lot of guys like me not really uh, sold on it, a little suspicious. Weber's you can always tune. That has six two-barrel Weber's. It's a 5.2 liter engine. It's what they call the quattro valve, which means it has four valves per cylinder. Um, it's really an upgraded version of the same engine in the Mura. And unlike the Mura, which the engine and the uh, transmission shared the same oil, this has a unique, uh, in fact, no one's ever done it since. The engine is mounted here, the transmission is in front of the engine, and then you have a drive shaft that literally goes through the sump of the V12 engine to the rear wheels. But let's take a look at that motor. Of course, these famous doors caused a huge sensation at the time and still do to this day. Well, it's as clean as I can get it. I use this car a lot. This car's got about 70,000 miles on it. Haven't had many problems with it at all. Hardly anything, really, um, because it's fairly straightforward. Uh, it's not a light car. This car is just about 4,000 pounds. This car weighs almost, well, a little less than double what the F1 McLaren awaits. Don't forget, the 80s were the last days of the old technology. So cars have changed as much from 1986 to now as they did almost from 1920 to 1986. Everything is different. Uh, there's no electronics on this car at all. There's no ABS, there's no traction control. There's none of that. It's just a big, beefy agricultural motor uh, sort of a manly gear shift. I mean, it shifts okay. It's not particularly light. You really have to kind of manhandle a little bit, but that's okay. I, I like that. You get used to it. As you can see, it's all tube frame. It's an extremely strong. Uh, it's like crazy money to fix if you crack one of these up. <laughs> you don't want to do that. This had the big wing on it, too. I took the wing off. I thought it was stupid. I, I, it was never proven to me that the wing did anything for aerodynamics other than slow the car down. The top speed on this car is probably about 170, 175, but you know that's fast enough. Let's take a look around the rest of the car. At the time, this, these were the widest tires ever available on a production automobile, those big Pirelli P7s. As you can see, the interior is pretty spartan by modern day standards. Um, you've just got everything you need, speedometer, tachometer, oil pressure gauge, oil temperature gauge, fuel gauge, voltmeter, Five speed here with a lockout, air conditioning, and of course your Alpine tape player. Who didn't have that poster of the Alpine uh, Lamborghini? That was one of the most famous things. And of course, ashtray and 
the usual stuff, but other than air conditioning, that's about the only option on this thing. But you know something? It's all you need. It's not as pretty as some of the other cars because just, it's just a well-used car. You might find some McDonald wrappers under the seat and a few other things. And from being left in the sun, as you can see, my leather has stretched. I've got to redo that. But you know, it's patina. It's character. It's a car I used an awful lot. I like this one. It isn't a big, stupid rubber bumper car. I never liked uh, some of the later ones, the Diablos. This was about as big as I got. Um, from this point on, they seem to get bigger and wider. And uh, it's just a nice driving car. Um, it's probably about a little faster than a, than a C6 Corvette, but not as fast as a, a Z06. I think that's a fair way to put it. But in 1986, when this came out, 455 horsepower, there was nothing like it. Everything else was in the 200s, 250 horsepower. 455, oh my God, that was the end of the world. Remember, the Viper was the first modern American car to break 400 horsepower, and that didn't happen until 92. So in the mid 80s, this was the king. Let me show you the front. You open your hood this way, and your battery and everything is in here. And as you can see, your spare tire, your little space saver spare, believe me, nothing looks stupider and a little space saver spare on the back of a Lamborghini Countach. Looks ridiculous, but hey, beats walking. Occasionally you have to upgrade these struts as I did. These all wear out and you gotta replace those. But otherwise, it's been a pretty dependable car. Runs fine, always starts, you know. It's spark, it's carburation. Oh, I upgraded the ignition, that's what I did. I put a monitored ignition system in it, electronic ignition. But other than that, it's just about as she left the factory. But come on, let's go for a ride. Check it out. You know, you don't think of a car like a Countach as an everyday car, but for about five years when I first got this thing, I drove it every day. You know, the real trick to Italian cars, be it an Alfa Romeo, a Fiat, or even a Lamborghini, is let the fluids warm up before you get on it. You know, an old boy told me Years ago, he was an old Italian mechanic, worked mostly on Alfa Romeo. But he said because it was warm in Italy, the oil passages were fairly small for the car because it was always warm and the oil was thin. He says in America, especially in the colder climates, uh, guys would get in an Alfa, they'd rev it up, and the oil just couldn't move through the passageways quickly enough, and they'd wind up just doing damage from lack of lubrication. It makes sense. Could be one of those old wives' tales. I don't know, but it makes sense to me. So. Whenever I get in a car like the Lambo or the Mura, the Countach, any of these, I turn and I let it idle a few minutes. I like to wait until the uh, temperature gauges are off the pegs, wait till the needle's off the peg, and then pull away, and I've never had any problems. This car really doesn't get the best mileage in the world. <laughs> in fact, I think the Lamborghini Countach is probably about the worst mileage car, you, modern car you could buy, at least back in the 80s. 8 to 12 on a really good day. The nice thing about this car is it's uh, in some ways fairly primitive. Just a big old gearbox, big motor for Italy, 5.2 liters, 455 horsepower, no electronics, no traction control, no power steering assist, none of that nonsense. As you can see, there's almost no visibility out the rear window. The idea behind this car was you're supposed to step on the gas and just take off, you see, so anybody behind you would be less left in the dust anyway. Bought a Countach under the dash, there's a hammer. So if you roll the car over and you can't get the door open because you're on the roof, it's supposed to smash out the windshield with the hammer. See, that's a safety feature. <laughs> oh, here's a hammer in case you roll it and you get pinned in the car. Oh, thank you, Mr. Car Dealer. And then you're trapped in the car. You don't want to break the windshield because that's like five grand. So you want to see, should I burn to death or spring for the five grand? Depending how hot it gets. Probably spring for the five grand. Sorry, no roll up windows. In fact, back in the 80s, the reason the windows only go down this far is if the speeds the car was capable of didn't have a window that wouldn't get sucked out or pull out of its track. So you get that little two inch and you can slip a dollar bill to a coal tanker, and that's about it. But they're a lot of fun. the car is quite futuristic and uh, outlandish looking, it's fairly contemporary. Trellis type frame, ladder frame. There's no other car that grabs people's attention like this one. I mean, it's just, this car was the 80s. You know, when 
you watched uh, Cannonball Run or any of those movies. I always remember one day I was going down Sunset Boulevard and I had just gotten into town and I didn't have any money. And I saw one of these parked on the side of the street and it was Rod Stewart's. And I thought, well, how cool is that? You know, one day I got a letter from a kid. He had gotten in trouble with his friends. He told this big lie that I was his uncle and that he and I would drive around in the Countach. And he said to me, as only uh, like a 12-year-old boy can do, he goes, any chance you could pick me up and drop me off at school one day so the kids won't think I'm a liar? And I thought, you know, it's not a... <laughs> It was such an outrageous request. I said, okay, the kid lived in Hermosa Beach. And I drove down one morning, I picked him up, we pulled up in front of the school. I said, okay, Billy, see you later, say hi to your mom. Okay, Uncle Jay, bye-bye. And it's really cool. Whoa, cool, Kuntas. That was my good deed for the day. car pretty much the same as it was when I got it in the 80s. Still got Duran Duran and the tape layer. And look, a genuine escort radar detector. Look at that. And let me tell you something. When you're driving a car like this, don't even show this to the cop. Hey, my radar detector said, ah, ah. If you're buying this car, you're speeding. Okay, that's, that's, that's just the way it works. And you can put this stupid thing on there. Maybe it'll give you a warning. But red car, Lamborghini, and radar detector smells prison. I stay a little longer, but I've got a flock of seagulls concert to get to. All right, see you later. Mm -hmm.